You know, there's a lot of things happening, going on. You know, if you were here Sunday, you, you heard a ton of announcements about what's going to happen in, in September and where School of the Bible is going to be. We're going to be doing it in the morning, you know, at 9 o'clock from 9 to 10, and then, of course, service from 1030 to whenever. Uh, usually it's 1030 to 12, you know, because I, I usually work that really well. But... Uh, and then Wednesday nights are going to be uniquely because we're going to actually go back to having a little bit of worship and then we're going to uh, have the word. But we're also going to be teaching on some things. You know, remember I threatened on, uh, to, to teach you on the subject of angels. So I've been studying along that line. I've got like six books on, on angels from all different authors. And, um, you know, it, it's funny because I actually ordered another book on angels and I thought it was from the same author I had one before, but I, they had a whole brand new title and I thought, oh, maybe he, he got some more revelation on it, but it's the exact same book, only a different title. So I thought, ah, okay. The problem was the one I have is from the 70s and this one here was actually from the 80s. So and they just rep- repackaged it and put a new title on it, new name, and, and it had a cool, catchy name, so I thought, heck, it got me. So I thought, okay, so now I have two of the same ones, but mine's an older version, and, you know, which I happen to like. I like some of the ones I have from the 60s and the 70s and stuff, so they turn out really, really well. But, uh, you know, thank God for the Word of God. Amen? Aren't you glad? Me, I am. I'm glad for the Word of God. I'm glad for the things of the Spirit. We've been, we've been just really, over the summer, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit you know, we could talk about the Holy Spirit until Jesus comes and never exhaust uh, him or exhaust what he does out of the Word of God because he's our teacher. Amen? He's the Spirit of truth. And so tonight what I want to do, and like I said, I'm kind of, for tonight, next week, uh, I want to kind of wrap some things up. Not that we're getting, you know, uh, like I said, I don't think I've even done it justice because we really didn't even get into the gifts. We didn't talk about, you know, uh, all of the, you know, gift of the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't want to bore you uh, with that, but also it's good to have knowledge of that, to know if God wants to use you in that. You need to know exactly what it is, okay? Uh, You know, it'd be kind of nice. You know, I've taught that in schools and taught that, you know, around the world, but uh, I taught that in a school when I first came here and in uh, uh, different ones around California and stuff, but... Uh, you know, sometimes you kind of think I'd give them too much information, but you know, sometimes it's good to know. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to John chapter 14. We're just going to jump into some things tonight and share with you the truth from the word of God. Amen. We're going to pray. Allow God to be God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. And, uh, uh, Always tell folks I might be a slow starter, but we're going we're gonna to gain some energy here. We're going to gain some things. Amen? You know, and, uh, you know, God's desire is for us to work with him. Yes. Amen? And have you know some things that we do or understand, we're only going to get to know and understand supernaturally. Aren't you glad for the revelation and the divine revelation of God that God's given you things supernaturally? He's, un- he's revealed things that, man, once you got it, you got it. Amen. It's like the new birth. Once you knew you were born again, man, you just knew that and you knew Satan couldn't take it away from you. He can't come to you and say, well, you're not saved anymore because you know that you know. You know Jesus is your Lord and he's your Savior. Amen. And what, a, what, a, what an incredible blessing, what a joy that that is. And so many times we need to get to know our Father more and more. And the more we get to know him, the more that we get to have fellowship with him, the more he gets to open himself up and gets to pour himself into us in the sense of we get to know and be used by him. Amen? Because God wants us to walk in the Spirit. He wants us to live in the Spirit. He wants us to operate in the realm of the Spirit. Amen? And it's not a spooky place. It's not a woo-woo. Do you know what I mean by that? Well, you get so, you know, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. But, uh, uh, and I don't really believe anybody's ever done that, because if you'll get so heavenly minded and walk close to the face of God, you'll be, you will do an incredible, incredible things on the earth. Amen? Amen. Because to walk with God is to know what earth needs, yes. you know, and uh, when you walk with God, you know what earth needs and you'll give what heaven supplies. Yes. Amen? See, when you know what earth needs, then you'll give what heaven supplies and heaven supplies the spirit. 
It's an answer from the Spirit. It's an answer from God that changes everything that we, we need. You know, and thank God you don't have to react according to the flesh or according to what you just know. Amen? I'm going to pray, but I'm just setting it up. Okay? Because sometimes we hear truth and we think it's too good to be true. Or we think it's, yeah, but that's only for the elite. That's only for the, you know, the Army Rangers or the Navy SEALs or the, you know, Marine Green Berets. It's only for the elite. It's only for those that are special forces. Those are for special ministries, special gifts. And yet God said, all these signs will follow them that believe. <sighs> so if you believe, you qualify. You qualify and it's amazing what God can do with people who simply believe, who simply trust God, who simply believe what the Word of God says. Amen? So we've got a whole bunch of believers here tonight. Amen? Right? Got believers watching. So that means about what we're about to partake on. I'm going to read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten scriptures to you. That's the starting part. Okay? And they're all about you. They're all about what you can do. Okay? How many of you know it's good to know what you actually can do in the things of God and what, what God's enabled us to do? Amen? Yeah. And the wonderful thing is, is that God didn't say you could do these, you know, if you're good enough. God didn't say you can do these if you've done enough things. God said you can do all, things, all of these things if you just believe. If you're a believer. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for your amazing grace. I trust you tonight. Holy Spirit, you speak through these lips. You think through my mind. You minister words of life to each and every one. Lord, your word is truth. Your word is life unto those who find it and health to all of their flesh. Thank you. It's medicine. Thank you, Father. You sent your word and you healed us. Father, your word will not not ever, 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 ever disappear. Amen? It will never, 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 ever disappear. Father, it'll never, ever fade away. It'll never become obvious. Your word lasts forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will last forever. Your words continue. So we look to the holy written word of God. This holy written word of God that's life to us. That it's you speaking to us. It's you talking to us. Father, thank you that you're going to speak to us through your word. Thank you, Lord God. I just thank you. And I thank you for these wonderful people that are here. Thank you for their heart. Thank you for their desire. Thank you for their hunger. And those that are actually tuning in tonight. Hallelujah. Tune in saying, hey, I want to hear. I need a word. I need something from God. God's going to speak to your Father, your scriptures, your life-giving word is going to flow into each and every one. Thank you for it, Father. I thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, you do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. John, hallelujah. John chapter 14, if you would, verse 12. I'm going to read out of the New Living. I can quote it out of the King James, so I'll do probably both a little bit here and there. But what I want to talk to you about is uh, knowing these scriptures here, they're for you as a believer. That these scriptures will produce what they say. Verse 12 says this, I tell you the truth. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. Amen? Verse 13 says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And then we're going to read that one again just because I happen to love it. Actually, I love all these I'm going to give you, okay? But the thing about it is, is that when you read, th read the Word of God and you look at the Word of God, you know, we have a tendency to go, does it really mean anything? You know, does all mean all? Amen. Does it, does it you know, is, is, who's talking here? Actually, my, my Bible, it's red, which means Jesus is talking. So Jesus said, Jesus is saying, I tell you the truth, anyone. Turn to your neighbor and say, anyone. That means you. 
That, or you could say it this way, that means even you, even you, even you, okay? Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. Okay, now let's stop right there a little bit here too uh, because people have a big, what did Jesus, what was the main thing that Jesus did? He went everywhere preaching, teaching, and healing. Okay, that was the three main things that Jesus did. He went everywhere teaching, preaching, and healing, you know, about the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God had come. He went everywhere teaching, preaching, and healing that he's anointed, hallelujah, to set the captives free. He's anointed to preach, you know, the gospel to the poor. He's anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Luke 4, 18, he preached that everywhere he went. That was the number one message that he preached. Everywhere he went, he began to declare the kingdom. You know, now, now you guys don't know this, but, you know, we've been supporting missionaries for years and years and years. One of the missionaries we support, and I can't tell you who he is and everything, anything else, but I can tell you, you know, because he's, he's in, he's in uh, Southeast Asia, I'm going to say. We're going to make it a big, broad thing because he's, he's working undercover and everything else because there's a, a, there's a bounty on his head. He's, you know, been arrested many times. And, and if he, you know, is in the country again, he gets thrown in prison, all kinds of stuff, gets killed. You know, you never see him again. But he's a great guy. And you've been supporting him for about 15 or so years, maybe. And uh, anyways, and what he does is he, he works with Wycliffe, Bible institution and all the places that go and reach the unchurched or no not unchurched unknown unknown people groups and they create Bibles for all of these people because there's still about two or three thousand of those that don't know anything up and they never even know if there is a God there is anything they don't you know they have all kinds of different thought processes and so you guys have helped you know create a Bible in a language that doesn't even have anything in it, no no books at all in that language and the first book they got was a Bible and uh, it was created for 30,000 people and uh, to, to get them to know and to how to understand uh, that there is even a God because when you can say hey let me just show you something they have no idea well what is this what are we doing and uh, but because we did this because you share if you want to receive this and of course once uh, you know the older folks receive then all the younger folks have to do what the older folks say so it's an awesome thing Uh, and so there's there's thousands and thousands of people being born into the kingdom of God and that's just one of the things that he's done. There's many, many other things. But he, going and doing, I'm trying to get him to come and to share and to be a blessing. So hopefully he'll do that next year sometime uh, to come and just tell you, hey, you guys. So when you walk into heaven, you're going to have all of these people welcoming you. And you're going to be like, well, how in the heck do they even know who I am? It's because you were here and you've done all that. You know, you've helped produce over three and a half million books in, in India. You've helped. Pro- see, see, I'm storing up treasures in heaven for you. I want when you get there, I don't want them to say, hey, you know, what did you do when you present to Jesus? I want them to say, hey, I know what you did. You were part of Harvest Bible Church. So this is what you did. Because you sowed, because you gave, because you were there. Amen. And the consistency, the consistency of what God's doing in that. You know, and, uh, you know, it's exciting when you got a blank piece of paper and you get to write on that blank piece of paper. Amen. You know, you get somebody to actually believe what the word of God says. And it's amazing when people actually believe what the word of God says, they actually do it. Amen. You know, the hardest thing for, it's funny, even about, you know, people that don't believe in Jesus or they read the Bible, they go, man, I love your Bible. I just don't like your Christians. If the Christians would actually believe the Bible they have, man, they'd be awesome folks. Amen? When it says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me would do the, do the same works I have done. You need to understand, Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing. That's what he'd do. People get caught up in the greater works. Well, the greater works are leading people to Jesus. That's the greater work, getting people born into the kingdom of God. Amen? But teaching, preaching, and healing is a supernatural aspect of, of going and doing it. But if you'll get the greater works is being able to glory to God, we have the opportunity to lead people to Jesus. Amen. And to get people born again into the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, because nobody can be born again till Jesus was raised from the dead. You guys know that, right? So Jesus never led anybody to himself. 
He made followers and told them, you follow me and don't do it. But here's the thing. It wasn't until after he was raised and he spoke to the disciples, they believed on him after he was raised. They were all saved in Luke's, the last chapter of Luke. Amen? And you see that. And he said, don't do anything until you be endued with power from on high. But let's keep reading. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask anything in my name and I will do it. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me anything in my name and I will do it. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's so amazing, you know, to see what, what, you know, uh, God is saying and do it. And and to realize anything means anything. And he says, because the Son wants to bring glory to the Father. So yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. That's why Peter, you know, gets up on the day of Pentecost, preaches a sermon, 3,000 people get saved. Amen? Amazing what takes place, what happens, phenomenal things. Then in Acts chapter 3, what does Peter do? He's walking, and he sees the guy that's been laid at the temple for 40 years. So Jesus walked past this guy and didn't do anything. But Peter knows that Jesus just told him, if you ask anything in my name. And Peter said, guess what I have? Such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, that rise up and walk. He just grabbed his hand and said, come on, you're going to walk. And yanked him up. And the man leaping and walking and praising God went into the temple with him. And then Peter preached again and 5,000 people got saved pretty cool pretty cool but the boldness of what that why because Peter had something Peter believed something Peter did something amen go to Philippians chapter 4 if you would with me Philippians chapter 4 I was going to give you a lot of scriptures that's what we're going to do we may not get off of these 10 scriptures tonight and then we'll pick up next week if we don't okay Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 hallelujah you know in in the uh, King James Version says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the uh, New Living Translation, it says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things. I can do everything. So I said, well, you think you can do everything. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Well, you just think you're so smart. Praise God, I've got an unction from the Holy One, and I know all things. If I need to know it, he's going to show it. And if he don't show it, I don't need to know it. Why? Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord. But the things that he reveals unto us belongs to us and to our children forever, period. But if he doesn't show it, I don't need to know it. If I need to know it, he'll show it. Well, you just think, yep, I do. Do you? Can you do all things through Christ who strengthened you? Can you do everything through Christ who strengthened you? Whatever you're facing, are you able to stand by the Spirit of God? His strength is sufficient. Paul thought he couldn't stand. He said, God, God this, this thing that's here, this, this, this thorn in the flesh. And I, think, and I thought, the Lord, I asked the Lord three times. And God said three times, my grace is sufficient. So I thought, his grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk on. Amen? 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 All right, let's go with this. Let's give you another one that will just rattle, rattle your cage here. Go to Luke chapter 1. Hallelujah. Luke 1. Praise God. Luke 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Luke one thirty seven. In the King James it says this, you know, in, in Luke one thirty seven it says, For with God nothing is impossible. Amen. In the New Living it says this it says for the word of God will never fail in the amplified it says no word of God is without power or uh, 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 fulfillment it has to be fulfilled (laughs) so all of the word of God has power and it has 
fulfillment. What does that mean? It means every promise of God has to be fulfilled. There's a day of fulfillment in that. There's, it has to come to pass. And the cool thing is, is all of the promises of God, the Bible says, amen, in, in, in 2 Corinthians there, it says in chapter 1, it says that all the promises of God are yes and in Christ, amen, or in him, amen. All the promises. Amen. Paul still told the Corinthians, he said, all things are yours. We have a tendency to think that God left us out on some stuff. He didn't leave us out on any of the spiritual gifts. Uh, Ephesians 1, 3. You don't even have to turn there. I'm going to quote it to you out of the King James. Ephesians 1, 3. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings blessings in heavenly places everything that we have need of he has blessed us with amen, amen. glory to God remember when the man came to Jesus well first of all he came to the disciples Jesus was up on the Mount of Transfiguration he came to Jesus and he, he tells them says hey you know he, he, Jesus comes down to the mountain he says what's going on and the man walks and says Jesus I brought my son and your disciples could not deliver him they couldn't set him free and Jesus says oh faithless generation how long do I got to put up with you bring him to me and, and the kid starts doing things he says how long has he been with this he says of a child and Jesus sees the multitude coming and he turns around and, and, and he kisses come out and, and, and the little boy goes like a dead even so much as many of them said that he is dead and then Jesus reached down got a hand pulled him up and he wasn't dead hallelujah amen but before that, the man says, he says, you know, because he asked Jesus, Jesus, if you can do anything, do something. Jesus said, what do you mean if I can do anything? If you can believe. He said, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. Amen. You got to believe something. If you can believe something, I can do all things. If you can believe something, I can do all things. Amen. And the man said, I believe, but help my unbelief. Praise God. He said, you know, I believe you can. That's why I'm here, you know, but nobody else could. Of course, we know the disciples said, hey, how come we couldn't cast him out? He said, because of your unbelief. He said, this, this thing only comes out by, by prayer and fasting, which is the unbelief that you have. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, because Jesus didn't have to fast and pray to cast out the spirit. He said it and the spirit had to go. He said, but the unbelief that you have can only come by prayer and fasting, by you dealing with you. Amen? Hallelujah. We, we see this. We see this. You know, as, as you see that in Mark 9, 23, there's another scripture there in, in Mark chapter 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, and I'll read that to you out of the New Living. I'll quote it, maybe quote it out of the King James. But he says this. It says, Then Jesus looked at them intently and said, Listen, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Do you believe that God can do all things? That means you are never, never, never without hope. And here's the thing, too. The reason that I'm sharing this is because, believe it or not, the creative power of the Spirit of God, the creative power of God is not determined by Him or whether or not it's manifested in your life. It's determined by you. It's determined, number one, by your belief, your faith in what God's Word says. Amen? Amen? I mean, we see this. We see this. How to, okay, go with me over to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Like I said, I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to... This is just right at the top. This is like the little thing we're doing here. We've got to get to the, got to get to the good stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, in the King James, Now thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph, in Christ Jesus. Here in the New Living, it says, but oh, do the, do the New Living again. I already quoted that one. I was going to manifest his savor and do that, but do the New Living one back up there and I'll read it off there. I don't want to go back over here. So put there you go. But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Amen. You know, like I said, in the King James Version, it says he makes manifest his savor everywhere we go. 
I like to say it like this. This scripture here, yeah, he says, God always causes a triumph. Every time I get in a big mess or every time it looks like it's going to be crazy, I go, smells like victory to me. <sighs> smells like victory to me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Put up Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28 in the Amplified Bible, if you could there. Miss Angelica, if you're back there hiding. Hallelujah. That's not part of this. This is just an extra atom. I add this to it. Yeah. You know, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. I know you guys know all these scriptures and know them all by heart. And it's all good. But uh, here it is here. Now, this is out of, the, out of the, get it out of the Amplified if you can. Can you find it in the Amplified? Yeah. So if you can get it in the Amplified, that'd be cool. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did you get it up there? Good. Now I'm going to read this. I'm going to read 27, 28. He says, look, only be sure as citizens to conduct yourselves that your manner of life will be worthy of the good news, the gospel of Christ, so that whether I do come and see you or am absent, I may hear this of you, that you are standing firm in united spirit and in purpose. You know, striving side by side and contending with a single mind for the faith of the glad tidings of the gospel. Go to verse 28. And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated by anything, by your opponent or your adversaries, for such constancy and such fearlessness will be a clear sign and a proof and a seal to them of their impending destruction but a sure token and an evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. So don't ever be frightened of the enemy. When you're standing here, standing strong, glory to God, he all of a sudden realizes, you know what? We're in trouble because they're not afraid. We're in trouble because they are trusting God and it's going to be our deliverance and salvation and that from God. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, when, when you see the things of God, it just... Man, wow, you know. And here's the thing, too. You know, when you talk about what God's given unto us, what we have, people have a tendency to not understand that it's yours, but the whole power behind it is who? God. It's God. The whole, everything comes from God, and God gives it to you to use, to use. See, that, that's why people get they, things happen and, and, and you see God, you see the power, the presence of God. And if you've really truly ever been used by God to do things and God just, you know, you've seen the power of God, the presence, you realize that you're just the vessel. Amen. That God's the one that did it. God's the one that brought it to pass. God's the one that enabled you to stand. God's the one that enabled you to give the words. God's the one that enabled the power to flow out of you to see the supernatural take place. Amen? And so it humbles you. It doesn't lift you up. Amen? But here's the problem. God can't do that through you if you don't believe that he can. Amen? I mean, how do you remember the scripture, Romans chapter 8 and verse 11? It says that, that if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, if it lives on the inside of you, what is it going to do? It's going to quicken you. It's going to make you alive. Amen. By the same power, the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you. It says if we have that, you know, in, in, in Romans 6 verse 4 says that if we have that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we ought to walk in newness of life. Amen. First John 4, 4 says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. But the first part of that verse says, he says, but you are of God, little children. You know, it says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Whew. What a revelation. Why is it so important to get that? Because God has put on the inside of us that same spirit that's in him. That comes back to the words of what Reinhard Bonnke used to say all the time. God's word in my mouth is the same as God's word in his mouth. So when God spoke, what happened? When God said, let there be light, what happened? When God said, let there be an earth, let there be a firmament, let there be this. When God said, boom, things begin to happen. So if God's word in my mouth is the same as God's word in his mouth, when I speak God's word, things should happen. 
See, we take this, which is called the logos, which is the written word of God, and it becomes a rhema, which is the rhema is the spoken word of God. And when something becomes a rhema in your life, it becomes empowered. Things happen and things change. Amen? And so there's a creativeness of it. Amen? You know, Sunday we talked about God actions. We talked about that we have to speak. We have to declare. We have to do the things there. You know, you know and I used an, an analogy. I actually made this statement about Lillian B. Yeoman. And for those of you who don't know, she wrote a, several books of, on healing way back at the turn of the century and things. And, and uh, they did a, a healing house is what they had. A lot, a lot of the same lines of what uh, uh, some other folks you know, copied from them. But all they would do is they'd have people who were terminally, and they just up there, and all they would do, they, wouldn't, they just read the word to them. And they'd, they'd, they'd pray and say, okay, you need this scripture. Or they'd pray and you need this scripture, and they'd just read that scripture to them over and over and over. And then they'd tell them if they could actually do it, they'd say, you read it over and over and over. You know, and it's fun to read their books because people would get up and run down the stairs and come down the stairs. People that were bed fast, given up to die, could not even, you know, all of a sudden they'd be running down the stairs and say, hey, hey, did you know <laughs> that this is true? And they'd be like, praise the Lord. You want to have breakfast? <laughs> See, we have a tendency to want something spectacular, something spectacular. But Lillian B. Yeoman said this. He said, God has tied himself irrevocably to human cooperation in the execution of divine purposes. I want you to listen to that. God has tied himself irrevocably to human cooperation in the execution of divine purposes. And I know that sounds really funny. People had better vocabularies than we do now, you know. We want to shorten this all up. What it means is God said, hey, without you, I can do nothing. What did John Wesley say? Seems that God is limited by our prayer life. Seems that he'll do nothing for humanity unless somebody asks him. So if God's tied himself to that, we've got to get them to cooperate. You know, we were talking about that. How many of you know the Bible says... In Matthew 18, it says, if any two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done to them by my Father in heaven. That's what the Bible says. That's why we talked about John, you know, 14, 12. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. You know, people get all nervous about that. Because see, what that does is say, wow, is that really true? Well, it's really true if you believe it. It becomes life to you. Amen. 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 And same thing with agreement. Amen. People don't really understand the power of agreement. Now, I mean, I've agreed with people, and then the next week they'll say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm thinking that maybe we're supposed to do this now. I thought, I thought we agreed that this was going to take place. We agreed about this. Yeah, but it's been over a week. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry, I gave you a little more than 10 scriptures. I was trying to, but I can't help that. That's the way I teach, the way I do whatever we're flowing, we're doing, we're going to do this, you know. And uh, I just see it of how it is because when you look at that, and I'm not putting them down, I'm not putting them down because, you know, I remember I, I heard this many, many years ago from my spiritual father. But he, he said, Man, I traveled two, three hundred miles out of the way to go to. Brother so-and-so's, because I needed somebody to agree with me. And I thought, man, it, it, you mean it didn't know? He said, I couldn't get anybody else that I knew who would actually agree. He said, they'd pray with me and say they did, but they, I knew they didn't. And I thought, I mean, that, that's a long ways to drive. That's like going from here to L.A., so I got to go find somebody to agree with me. How many of you jump in your car and drive six hours, six and a half hours? Okay, I got to pray, because you believe in it. Go out of your way. And then you got to go six and a half hours back. But is your life worth it? I said, well, how do you know if you... See, that's the thing about it. Is people say, oh, you know, I, one of my best, best examples of this is that when I was in Bible college, you know, we were doing things, and this guy came up to the instructor, and you could tell. He said, listen, I need you to agree. I mean, I'm here. So what, and I need, I need to sell my business. 
And this was back in 1979, actually 78 at this time. And he goes, hey, and the, and the instructor's like, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. What are we going to do? And I need to get to pray again. He said, I need to pray, and you, get, you agree. And he's praying. And at that time, they didn't know the guy. I mean, this is a student. It is, you know, and he's, he's, he's probably in his 40s at that time. I'm a, I'm a young guy at that time. And I'm listening to this. What, he's listening to we are agreement that my company is selling for $4 million. And I've got my eyes. I'm watching. You should have seen the instructor's knees buckle. He, I mean, he's and the S guy's praying. This guy's praying. I mean, he's because he's thinking this guy's a spiritual guy. And the instructor's like, I, I can't, you know. And I and I'm thinking, oh, I want to watch this. This is good. We're learning about these things, you know. And he used that scripture. And he used that scripture about believing. And the uh, funny thing about it is that you could, t- and then I remember talking to the, my instructor afterwards, and I, because I said, well, I, I saw, he goes, yep, he said, but you know what? He said, my job to agree. I agreed with him 100%. He said, yeah, was it, was it way out of my league in the sense of thinking? But that's not my fault. My job is I am in agreement with him and believing, and we are in agreement, and he believes, and I believe. You know, and it was a great testimony. He sold his company. You know, he was, I should have got to know him better. So he could have gave me money, but I didn't get to know him better. You know, but the thing about that, that, that's the thing is that we look at this and go, I mean, and yet his faith wasn't in there, but his faith was in the prayer of agreement. He said, I, he goes, I have faith in the word. Do I have faith to believe for the four minutes? No, but I have faith to believe in, in, in Matthew 18, 19. It says, if any two shall agree, it's touching. We got this. Amen? See, you know, you look at that and go, but you get rattled, but it's, you're not the one. You're, you're in, the, in, the, in the sense of agreement. We're standing. We're standing. We're believing. We're doing it, you know? Because, see, here's what people mess up is that with the Word of God, with believing. Because what I'm talking about tonight is the creative power of the Spirit of God because God wants to use you. He wants to use you in gifts of healings and working of miracles, gift of faith, word, word, you know, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. He wants to show you things in the spiritual realm about discerning the spirits. He really does. Amen. There's no such thing as a spirit of discernment. That's a lie. It's discerning the spirits seen into the realm of the spirit and not just seeing demons, but seeing angels and seeing things. We're going to talk about all that stuff. You know, I got to get it all in, in my heart here and get it all wrapped around before I can dump it on you. It takes a while. <laughs> takes a while. I'm going to read all six of these books and look at things and see, you know, kind of get, a, get, the, get the theme of what's happening, what's going on. Amen? Because I believe that. I believe that we're going to get to see angels ascending and descending, doing the things they need to do. Amen? I, I truly believe that. I believe they're going to be helping and doing, and you're going to have testimonies of I don't know who it is, but somebody, you know, here they were, here they were. And all of us in our lives can probably testify at least one time or another Hey, somebody came and did something, and they were gone. I couldn't see it. I mean, but I don't care if they were an angel or whatever. They were, they were a blessing. They took care of some things. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, we thank God for that. But I actually believe that there's got to be a lot more activity. Amen? There needs to be some things here. Hallelujah. I do. I believe that. I, I've not, I am just pressing in. No matter what the enemy's trying, and that's why the enemy's trying. That's why he's attacking on every side. But we win. Amen? Because here's a, here's a big secret. Let me help you out this thing. Here's one of the biggest secrets about Christianity is, is you know, let Christ possess your heart. Let's, let's give him our all. Let's quit trying to play games, you know. You know, and, and when you, you have to say, how do I know when God really has me? Well, number one, you have peace and you have joy because you see his victory. So that when the enemy's attacking, you know it's the enemy, but you also know the enemy's defeated. Thank y'all for your overwhelming response. What do you mean? What am I seeing his victory? His victory on the cross. His victory of taking the keys of death and hell. His victory of knowing that he defeated the enemy. Hallelujah. That he made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. That he brought him to nothing. Hallelujah. That he cannot hurt you anymore. You've been set free. You've been out of the kingdom of darkness. You're into the kingdom of his dear son. And Satan has no place in you now. And you give him no place. Amen. You see that. When you do that, things begin to happen. Because, see, when you see his victory, all of a sudden you start thinking like he thinks. 
You get his consciousness. What do I mean by that? You get his thoughts. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Remember? You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, you know, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for those who love them. And we think, yeah, see, I don't know. He hasn't prepared. I don't know what it is. Wait a minute. Verse 10. That's verse 9. What does verse 10 say? But God, but God has revealed all these secret things, all these things unto us. Because he didn't give us this other spirit. He gave us his spirit. He gave us the third person of the God. We got born again. We got the spirit of the living God living and dwelling. Hallelujah. Who knows all things. That's why John could say, you got an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You got an anointing that abides within you that you need not that any man teach you because that anointing is going to teach you. It's going to show you. That's why you know things supernaturally. And you say, well, how do I know this? Because God revealed it to you. And that's how it becomes truth that you hang on to. See, then his power, his peace possesses your mind. Amen. You get to think and find, say, hey, you know, I got to think this way. See, the only way I can stay full is to acknowledge his victory, his presence, his power, his peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, my joy I give unto you. He said, I, lo, I'm with you always unto the end of the earth. I'll never leave you, no for saying. My presence is going to be with you everywhere. And guess what? Where my presence is, there is salvation. There is healing. There is everything you need. So if you step back and you sense, okay, Lord, and you look on the end and the presence of God, you go, oh, I've got victory. Smells like victory to me. God, you're going to give me the right answer. You're going to give me the right words. You're going to tell me, how do I do this? Remember the old, old scripture? If you grew up in church, you probably knew this one because Zechariah chapter four, verse six says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Even they had a revelation of the spirit of God. We've got that spirit. All the Old Testament, they did, they had to come upon them. We've got it in us and he comes upon us. Amen. The spirit's within us and then he'll come upon us and clothe, clothe us and anoint us to do service and to do things. But we need to let that anointing come upon us. I mean, that's why Jesus was always yelling at the disciples. Bless their hearts. Where's your faith? How come you got little faith? How faithless generation. Oh, what are we going to do? You remember? And after three and a half years, finally they go, oh, now we believe. And Jesus is like, and now you get this? You getting it now? I'm dying. You getting it now? He goes, I know you ain't getting it. You ain't going to get it till the Holy Spirit gets in you. That's what he told him. He said, you're not going to get it until you be endued with power from on high. So just don't, just don't mess up anymore. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the things that, that we understand, because we, we know this, and yet we have a tendency to um, draw back because it takes faith to receive. And faith is, you know, void of our feelings. Faith doesn't, you know, it's like, wow, I don't know if I've done enough yet. Listen, if you're facing the situation, Wigglesworth said it like this. He said, if you have to get ready every time an opportunity comes, you're going to miss every opportunity. Are y'all doing okay? I don't know about you, but I'm preaching me happy. Hallelujah. Because I'm just speaking the word of God and just challenging me. Because the enemy and all of it is just, you know, because guess here's something. You, it, most of the time we look at the bigness of the need. Remember I talked about when that guy said $4 million, that instructor's knees buckled. I mean, there was, there was a physical reaction. And I know that guy saw it and heard it, but the re, he, he covered himself good. He said, yeah, let's agree, let's agree. You know, he says, because I can agree. I do believe Matthew 18, 18 and 19. I do believe that. Amen. And I can believe that. Now, we're believing, I'm believing, I'm in agreement for what he's prayed come to pass in his life. Amen. You see? And it was a great testimony. Now, you know, and, uh, and it bolstered even the instructor's faith, you know, just based on the fact of, hey, I, I stayed in faith. I stayed in faith believing the scripture. Amen. See, our faith doesn't have to be in the results. It has to be in the scripture because the scriptures is what brings the results. The pressure is not on you. The pressure is not. The pressure is on the word of God. The pressure is on the word of God. God didn't tell you to figure out how. 
Your job's not to believe for the how. Your job's to believe for the doing. God, you do the howing. You figure out how you're going to do it. You just do it. Our job is to believe. God's job is to do. Amen. Amen? It's not our job. It is not our job. Problem is, is that we see a big need and it just messes us up. And if you look to the bigness of your need instead of the bigness of your God. Amen. And nothing's impossible. There's nothing. I don't care what anybody said. I do not care what's transpired. Don't care what it looks like. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible to him who believes. See, because if the devil can keep you on the circumstances or keep you looking at the need, then he'll accuse God. He'll accuse the word of God. He'll say, see, it's not working. It's been a week. See, see, the key is when you pray and get an agreement or you pray and you ask the Lord, Mark eleven twenty four. what does Mark eleven twenty four say? Well, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, says, verily, verily, or truly, truly, you know, I say that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that he saith, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24 says, therefore, what things have you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them them and you shall have them when do you believe that you receive them when you pray not when you have them you believe you receive them when you pray and then you will have them but if you don't believe you've already received them you will not get them (laughs) it's not that hard folks it really isn't all that hard you know but the problem is is that when you do believe that, people are going to look at you, you know. And, and we know what? We do this all the time. How many of you order on Amazon? All of you do. A lot of you do. You order in here. You know you order on this thing and you go to, or you go to Walmart.com or Target or all this stuff. And you order it. You pay for it. And you believe you're going to get it. Most of you got Amazon Prime because you're going to get it the next day because you can't handle it. It's going to come. But, it, but here's the thing. If you say, hey, I just got this. Well, show it to me. I can. It's on its way. You've got faith, more faith in Amazon than you do in the Word of God. <laughs> it's the same principle. You believe that what God said is true. You believe that this is what God's saying. What things ever I desire when I pray, I believe that I receive them. I got them. You may not see them. I may not see them. But guess what? They are coming. Hallelujah. They're here because as far as I'm concerned, they're here. So it says, it's been a week. I don't care. I got it. How, why would I care if it's been a week, if it's been a month, if it's been a year? It doesn't matter because me, I believe I've already received. So if I've already received it, hallelujah, it don't care how long it takes. We have a tendency and then think with the things of the spirit. Now, here's the thing. That's why we don't operate in the realm of the spirit because we're looking, well, what happens if it doesn't work? Well, I got the other side of the coin. What happens if it starts working? What happens if, the, if things begin to change? What happens if all of a sudden you do lay hands on the sick and they do recover? What happens when you begin to say things and speak by the Spirit of God and life-changing things begin to take place? What happens when you begin to say, you know, this is, I believe this with all of my heart. Amen? Things begin to change. Amen? See, the problem is is that we want miracles, but nobody wants to do the steps to, to take the, get the miracles. So I don't want people to think I'm crazy. They already think you're crazy, so just get crazier, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? I mean, okay, let, let me just, let's share this real quick. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. I'm going to read to you the King James Version. It says this. Whom having not seen, you love. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. In whom though now you see him not, yet you believe in him. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Why? Because you've received the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. You know that you're saved. You know that there's a joy. There's a peace. You know, you know you have that surety. And yet, you've never seen him. Amen? You're not seeing him, but you know he's there. Amen? And here's the thing. 
If you'll start believing in the Holy Spirit, who's your helper, who's your comforter, who's your guide, who's your teacher, who'll show you. If you start asking the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, what do we need to do here? How do we need to do this? You know? You know, we, we lost something recently or thought we left it at a hotel. And I, I, I you know, it just didn't sit well with me or did anything like that. And so, but it was like it was gone, okay? And so I thought, okay. Well, I, you know, uh, every Wednesday, I take Pastor Pamela's car and get her washed, get it full of gas, get it all nice because I have to, I take out Brother Self. So I'm not allowed to go get him unless it's washed, cleaned out and everything. So I had to do that. And I did it last Wednesday and I had done it and stuff. And so anyways, and, and we had lost it before, you know, but all of a sudden I'm driving home. I didn't even know about it. I, I, I vacuumed out the back seats, the whole, I vacuumed out the whole car. And anyways, so I'm driving back because I'm going to go pick her up. All of a sudden, I hear this, donk, donk, every time I was turning. And I drive kind of like this, so the car goes like this. So it's pretty cool. You can get to hear everything's in the car. That's why she has to drive all the time. She's so precious. She drives all, because if I drive, she gets sick. So that's the key. So, you know, but, I, but, I'm, but I'm always looking. So, I mean, I, but I stay between the white lines. I mean, it's really good, but it's, it's just all over the place. And so I'm going, donk, donk, donk. You know, and I got a 30-minute drive, so you can hear a lot of donks. And all of a sudden, I say, Holy Spirit, what is that? He said, that's that water bottle that you guys said you left at the hotel. It's not left. It's underneath that seat, and it's way underneath there and way up. I thought, well, I, I was under there. I looked at the thing. I mean, I, got, I, I, dropped, a, I dropped the top of, of a regular plastic, and I said, no, I dropped one of those, and I had to get in there and get that, and I got that. It's not under there. But when I got to the post office, I, got, I thought, you know what? I'm going to check that sucker. So then I got down, laid down, got down. And sure enough, it had, it, wow, a water bottle this big had got up and actually lodged up inside the seat. I haven't figured, she must have been driving crazy. I don't know. We had to figure that. <laughs> Just kidding. But thank God we found it, you know. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know. Because if you got down and looked, you didn't see it at all. She looked. She went out to the car and looked. She, she said, it's gone. It's not in the car. And I cleaned the car out. It wasn't in the car. So I said, Lord, you know, but when I kept hearing something go, donk, donk, I said, something's underneath. Something's wrong with the seat because that doesn't do it. So now she's got her water bottle back. So it's awesome. Same thing with the Holy Spirit to find, you know, and I love that. We do that all the time where I'll say, okay, we've looked. Yeah. Now we pray. We've looked. Now we pray. Someone says, why don't you pray before you look? Well, obviously, we don't have time to pray, so we don't look. Then when we look, which takes 15, 20 minutes, if we'd have just prayed in the first time, we'd have found it in the five minutes, okay? But, you know, who wants to bother God with trivial things? Amen? It does. It does. But within you and within us and within me, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, praise God, to give us everything that we need to succeed or, or to receive or to be used by God. Because when you get into a situation, that situation, you're in control. You've got the power to receive the things that God has. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and you've heard me say this over and over and over again, and we're going to close with this. You always find that the victory or you know, the receiving or whatever is the moment when you open your door of your heart to believe. And that's what it is. The creative power of God's within you. The anointing is within you. The power is within you. God's blessed us with all things. He's given us all things to do things. And now what we have to do is believe that he shares with us and not be afraid to speak it out, not be afraid to act on it. There's got to be our actions in order for God to do things. Amen. And so if you've been believing for something for a long time, probably need to get somebody to agree with you. Get somebody to take hold together with you. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, seriously. Or think of it as go back and find out, okay, what's happening? What do I need to do? Do I need to rebolster my faith or do I need to rebolster something? What do I need to do, hallelujah, to see what's happening? Because the Holy Spirit's job is to make real the Word of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit's job is to, is to bring to life things of the Word of God and the things that Jesus has already bought and paid for us for. Amen? And so we allow that. Then the Spirit of God's going to say, you know what? I just sense this. Amen? So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We love you and thank you. You're such a great God. You're such a just uh, uh, so precious, so wonderful. And Lord, I just thank you that I just trust tonight. I just shared my heart. 
I've just shared my heart, Father, and given lots and lots of scriptures on who we are and what we have. Father, to build faith on the inside of us to let God be God in our lives. Father, you're not through giving visions and you're not through giving words and you're not through showing people things to come. You're not through healing. You're not through delivering. You're not through with anything. You're still God and we're still the church. And so the church is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. We're still going to do the things that you've called us to do. Lord, thank you for these wonderful folks. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, we just love you and praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.